idea of like, what if my company burns down and I'm down for like two hours? Do I have a satellite office? What if I am just locked out, locked out? It should be, can we have at least one skeleton crew inside to let us in? And if not, can we afford to have a locksmith? Do you have a locksmith on call? Like, it's like having a lawyer on call. Because again, destructive entry, your servers will keep running fine with a big hole in the drywall. Like if a drive dies in a raid array and you're like, oh crap, that dude's in Aruba, we can't get in. Kick the wall down. You're supposed to be there. No one's going to arrest you. <laughs> so uh, there was one hand there and then you, sir. What kind of legal grief do we get from publishing? Uh, fortunately, not as much as some software guys do. Uh, the DMCA, I imagine, could be used to apply to like a crazy crypto algorithm in a lock, but I've never seen it really applied to like research discussion. I know locks, lock companies a lot of times don't like the sport picking community. Uh, sometimes, you know, they'll just outright slander people in the press, like Ingersoll Rand owns Schlage. Uh, we like a lot of Schlage products. It's very painful to see how they could utterly just trash the picking world in, in the popular press. In Europe, it's not like that. In Europe, you have companies actually coming to the picking community and say, hey, we made this. What do you think? One lock that I didn't put in the unpickable category but probably belongs there, and I should take some photos of it, is called the RKS lock by Stanton Concepts. It was a lock designed open source from the ground up. He came to the hobbyist community, he came to the hacker world. He's like, I got this idea, what do you think? And he's been at tool meetings and stuff for years. And it's a, it's, it has to do with container shipping, uh, shipping container security, it's great. But has there ever been a really bad lawsuit? Not from a manufacturer, usually. Sometimes they will say, no, 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 you completely misrepresented us, and they'll try to sue that way, but not like you're giving away trade secrets. Because, dude, it's hunks of metal. Like, I didn't, you know, I didn't reverse engineer your code. I just, I put a, like a, a Dremel tool and I cut the lock in half and I took photos of it. That kind of thing. And there was, right on, there was a question here, yes. Yeah, kind of a follow-up to the one about locking yourself out and that, that it's probably more procedural. Mm -hmm. But you have to have it's an excellent point. You should definitely ask me uh, in a bar for a full story, but what you're, he's, he's saying, what about for procedures like fire access? Uh, there are municipal codes, in fact, in many instances that require you know, the fire company to get in. You know, you know in the day, back in the day, they used to just have like an ax, and then they would have, what because they were, didn't want to get sued if there was a false alarm, they would have, and there were more and more false alarms with everything wired up together. It's not just smoke coming out of a window. It's like, oh, the ADT panel's blinking. We gotta get out there. So then they would have big key rings for all their clients. Like there was the town key ring and that you did not want that laying around at the firehouse, which is hosting like my super sweet 16 on the weekend. It just, I wouldn't want my key ring there, would you? So what they use now is something called a Knox box. It's a real interesting piece of technology. It is capable of really neat security. The idea is it's a, a high secure lock on a, like embedded in the concrete box with your key behind it. So the, at your facility. So the fire company has a, has a Knox key which is usually universal throughout the whole state. They don't like you to know that. Uh, it's, there's there's the, the one Medico key for every 50 states. That's being changed slightly. And then eventually they started to say, well, this is sure is insecure. So they had, the keys were restricted, which doesn't mean a whole lot sometimes. And in the cab of the, of the fire truck, it's actually a unit called a key secure, which on the nice version, it takes DTMF tones over the network to authorize the removal of the key. But the biggest thing you can do if you're interested in that kind of field is ask if your Knox box is wired into anything. Many modern Knox boxes actually have a, a trip sensor, a read switch, and you can have it as part of your system. You can log that event, you can have it set off alarms. If the alarm's already going off, I mean, fine. But if someone plays with a Knox box and get it open because they have the fire key, I mean, you should set the alarm off. Most of those are not hooked up. Because think about when those get put in, like you're pouring concrete. You haven't even hired your electric guy yet, probably. But if you have a facility that's putting a Knox box in, think about that too. We are really tight on time. Is there one last quick question? All right, you, sir, and then we're all going to go to the startup, and then we're all going to go to the bar. Would yes, sir. The newer electronic locks in which category? That's a way bigger question than I would have time for here. But we'll each buy each other a drink, and we'll talk about it all in the bar. Does that sound good? All right. All right, yes, yeah, so a two-drink minimum for that question. I approve of that. You, sir, get one of my first drinks. All right, thank you so much, guys. Thank you.